Well, hello everybody and welcome once again to what I call the sizzling edition. Well, there's no other edition really of the In World Review, where it is now the uh, 29th of, of June. 2014. Yes, uh, summer is really upon us um, for real, and this time next week it will be July, but you didn't need me to tell you that. It has been a rather busy week. Um, last week we were discussing, and we'll probably be discussing um, a little bit more about the um, people's thoughts of um, the new platform on its way from Linden Labs. Um, but, um, and in fact, uh, the discussion about that has almost overshadowed uh, the fact that uh, we've uh, spent a whole week in world filming and otherwise enjoying uh, the Second Life Birthday celebrations. Uh, the um, SL11B uh, community celebration has been on. Um, uh, the lab have been promoting it. And now Lyndon's are actually allowed to come into Second Life. We've seen a few of them walking around it too. Um, so very good, very good there. Very good there. Um, as I say, we've been in um, uh, filming um, all week, basically um, a whole load of uh, uh, talk shows um, uh, with uh, Meet the Artists, Meet the Designers and Meet the Communities. Um, the compilations of these are up, um, the um, Meet the Communities part one is on our companion channel, uh, Metal World One, Virtual Living, and you'll be able to see um, Sunday through Thursdays, um, Meet the Artists and Meet the Designers immediately following this program. Program when we go off air and of course there'll be parts of the week in review when it comes up tomorrow um so um absolutely great stuff now i'm going to break with um uh conformity here a bit because uh, one of our guests uh, needs to leave by about one i'm going to actually in introduce everybody here before we start delivering the news headlines and we'll try and keep the news headlines short so that we can um, get into uh, some discussion uh, fairly quickly um so uh on my left of course uh, we as always we've got tara tara Yates. so welcome tara oh thank you mel <laughs> and on my right and <laughs> as always, we've got Maria Korolev. Hi, Maria. Hi, Mel. Thank you for having me. Right. Now, uh, next to Tara, uh, we're joined by uh, Pet Love Pet Shop, um, our wonderful multitasking um, <laughs> video camera. <laughs> Hi, Pet. And Pet has sadly gone silent. But uh, Oops, here I am. Sorry saying, about that. Uh, uh, <laughs> as you can see, but no, she's got a computer. She's got a computer on her lap. A sure sign she's multitasking. And um, <clears throat> uh, next to Maria, I'm really pleased to uh, welcome uh, Caledonia Sky Tower. Hi, Caledonia. Hello. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Indeed, it is very familiar because um, we were filming um, about the artists last night and. Um, Due to um, a slight collision of appointments and things, uh, Tara Lynn's uh, guest uh, didn't show up. So we ran around, uh, um, or Tara Lynn ran around trying to find a replacement. And uh, we ended up with Caledonia. And it was such a brilliant talk <laughs> that I thought, oh, I've, I've got to have her on uh, here too. Uh, I'll, I'll ask Caledonia to introduce herself in a while. Um, but um, where, interestingly, she is uh, very prominent in um, uh, Second Life in the um, storytelling uh, literature field, I suppose. And uh, more importantly, uh, she has an outpost, shall we say, on um, Kitely. Um, so she really sort of fits into our um, uh, cross-platform metaverse brief, as it were, as well. Anyhow, um, just to uh, quickly go to the headlines, most of which belong to Maria anyway. Um, news emerged later uh, earlier in the week that um, the Kitely Market um, planned to have delivery to uh, Philip Rosedale's new venture, High Fidelity, which is um, a rather um, uh, nice and early <laughs> um, sort of thing. Um, um, I don't have the chat open for some reason on this other... Oh, yes, wait a second. I do have one. I think it's the wrong chat. Um, I have um, uh, uh, digditblog.com. Um, I'm going um, to paste... Um, so I copy and paste the L for this one quickly over for the chat room. Um, but it's actually in the other channel. I'm sure somebody will get it. Um, this is an article on virtual embassies in the age of diplomacy. And um, it sort of um, looks at um, virtual embassies, um, not just in Second Life, but um, all over the place. So uh, rather interesting sort of piece there. Um, 
uh, the, the right um a company called game face again maria will talk about this are building a, a virtual reality operating system and it will support open sim uh, that was quite good news firefox to bring virtual reality to web i'll leave that to maria as well um, now, um, a blogger that um, we're very fond of here, I know Tara is and I am, uh, Gwyneth uh, um, Llewellyn. Uh, she doesn't blog very often these days, but she had an extraordinary long piece uh, this week um, called Next Life, um, obviously um, bringing her take on the um, news about Linden Lab's new platform. And um, the link for that one is heading over very quickly. No. And um, in the anecdotal news, which I thought was absolutely w wonderful uh, this week, I mean, um, eat your heart out, Oculus Rift, uh, Google's developer conference happened during the week, and they handed out a piece of cardboard. And apparently you are able to put this piece of cardboard together, and you've got a cardboard virtual reality viewer, which you then slot your Android phone into. Um, this... <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh, but it's apparently sheer genius, and um, I will be publishing a 45-minute demo of it over on Metal World News in a couple of days, so um, uh, you can look forward to that. You can apparently make this thing yourself, although um, you do need a couple of things other than cardboard, but apparently they're fairly easy to get, so there you go. Right, uh, well, with that, and uh, as I said, we're going to try and hurry through the news bits. Um, I'm going to hand over to Tara for her quick, um, uh, uh, well, the important bits of her take on the week. So it's you, Tara. <clears throat> Thank you, Mel, and greetings, everyone, from the Pacific Northwest. And uh, we are obviously moving into the uh, uh, serious summer time as far as the U.S. side of the pond is concerned, where uh, the, we're, we're going into the week of the 4th of July. And the 4th of July is, of course, one of the big, the big long weekends, uh, wherever the 4th of July falls relative to a weekend uh, <clears throat> for those on this side of the pond. Um, and <laughs> in light of that, there was a very amusing commercial that I saw that's on, on YouTube uh, for a British brew uh, taking uh, the U.S. to task for still celebrating the fact that we threw them out three, three, 200 years, three, almost 300 years ago. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a, a brilliant little it's a brilliant little uh, <clears throat> send up uh, it, it, identifying all the things British that uh, we Americans have missed out on or would be had we not thrown the British out 300 years ago. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll find the URL for that and stick it in chat because it it's good for a chuckle. Anyhow, uh, yes, this is uh, in the spirit of birthdays, continuing the, this has been the big birthday week uh, for the Second Life 11th birthday. Um, the Sims are open for another week, so uh, this is, this coming week is the week to go look when there's not people crowding the, uh, the uh, entertainment Sims, and so it's a little less crowded, and it's a good chance to go see those fabulous bills, and there's a lot of really Im immensely impressive uh, work that's been done this year. And uh, I brought along a little friend. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the kitty cats uh, have a little tradition of a, of a birthday cat every year, and this is uh, sitting on the arm of the chair is the SL11B birthday cat, uh, which you can have your very own for free uh, as far as the cat is concerned, uh, either from the uh, kitty cats uh, build at the birthday or uh, the kitty cats have a sim that they... Uh, used for birthday celebrations, uh, SL11B uh, celebrations every year, and uh, you can pick one up there too. Uh, you can only get one, but uh, um, they're very cute. Uh, it's got a, a lovely red coat this year, so he's, he's rather colorful. Um, <clears throat> and they also this afternoon uh, are having uh, one, something they do a couple times a year, and that is the uh, Kitty Cat Races. Um, and that's taking place at the Kitty Cat Sim, and that's when people jump on their on their uh, uh, megapuses, such as uh, Hieronymus here, uh, and uh, attempt to maneuver them around a track, which is a bit of a trick because these uh, uh, the the uh, <coughs> yes the megapuses are hard to make turn. They they have their own thoughts about what direction they should be going. Anyhow. Uh, onward to other, just a couple of other items that caught my attention. Um, 
First off, not not specifically Second Life at all, but uh, this caught my interest. Facebook uh, apparently revealed this week that a research paper was carried out based on a week-long experiment done with uh, Facebook guinea pigs, unbeknownst to Facebook guinea pigs. Uh, nearly 700,000 users um, were uh, <clears throat> used to test the effects of transferring emotion online. And specifically what they did is they, they manipulated their algorithms so that they got a dominance of negative textual items or positive textual items, and uh, whether exposure to led people to change their own posting behaviors. And uh, the result was, yes, indeed, it did. Uh, posts themselves were not affected, um, what could still be viewed, but the trial edited what the guinea pig users saw. Um, those who saw positive content were, on average, more positive and less negative with their own Facebook activities in the days that followed. <clears throat> the reverse was true for those who were tested with more negative posting. And what's most interesting, I think, about this is not the results, because that's really not a uh, particularly noteworthy uh, finding, but the fact that they did this and people weren't told ahead of time. Now, Facebook claims that, yes, you've signed off on uh, this sort of thing by virtue of signing off on their terms of service, uh, but uh, even the editor of the re where the report was public said they found the ethics behind it to be problematic. Um, and uh, there's a, f a certain amount of buzz going on around this. Uh, but anyway, it was kind of an interesting item. And of course, the other thing I think that's been continuing to dominate the news is the continuing uh, increase in, uh, in the... Uh, <clears throat> of stuff around virtual worlds and uh, um, hype. Uh, <laughs> the hype is, is getting thick and deep. <laughs> um, and uh, the one little item I ran across was uh, an item that had taken off from the Google, the Google Cardboard VR glasses and um, looking at the potential for virtual reality. And uh, one article uh, asked 12 entrepreneurs who are part of the Young Entrepreneurs Council, uh, what they, practically speaking, how do you think virtual reality technology will affect the startup space in the next five years? And they uh, got 12 different responses. First off was induce a virtual, or excuse me, a venture capitalist feeding frenzy. In other words, get your hands up, those of you who've got new ideas, uh, add a whole new platform, inspire new mobile devices, increase applications for fashion and beauty, offer endless opportunities, reduce face-to-face -face meetings, enrich narratives created over multiple platforms, bring the in-store experience online, and nothing yet but give it five years. Those were the answers. Um, and what was interesting to me in this, aside from that, was that here is another example where they had 12 entrepreneurs, and one of them was a female, and the other 11 were Very guys. Good. So, <laughs> anyway, and that's all I have for the moment. So I'm going to toss it back to you, Mel, because I know we want to get Caledonia in here soon. Exactly. We, um, we had a bit of a dilemma before we came on air, which is why we've uh, gone live a wee bit late, and we really have about 30 um, minutes left to um, bring Caledonia into the discussion. Uh, if it's okay with you, Maria, I'm going to ask you to hold back on the, the, the headline reports till after we've brought um, Caledonia into... Uh, into the chat, um, just so we can have it. No problem <laughs> at all. And so to speak. Um, so, uh, Caledonia, uh, welcome to the show. The show, if you're still there, if you're on voice, have we got Caledonia in here? Uh, I'm still, I'm here. Oh, wonderful. As, 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 yes, you are indeed. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we, we, we had a wonderful uh, talk with you last night. And um, you are a many-faceted person. You, you do, uh, you're involved with theatre in real life. You run the uh, Senchai. Is that how I pronounce it? Shanaki. Shanaki Library. Okay. Yeah, it, which is in uh, Second Life, and I'm forever post. I've never been to it, but um, I'm forever posting every week uh, links, uh, courtesy of Anara Pay mostly for for the events there. And um, uh, you you do a bit of building. Um, you have a passion for storytelling. Um, there was so much covered in this talk that, and uh, you were so articulate. And I thought that was the reason to bring you in. I'd like to start, if I may, if you just um, it, it, it just give us a brief 
history um, of um, developments, but maybe moving into um, the point that you have also gone to Kitely as well, because that's highly relevant to us. Yeah. Right. Shanaki Library was started uh, in March of 2008 in what was uh, then the West of Ireland estate um, in Second Life, uh, which was a charity estate. It, it, it had uh, a mix of residential and, and public sims uh, and was raising money for a real-world charity um, at that point. Um, that's the, and uh, the library grew up as a, a program um, out of that. It was originally the West of Ireland Library and Cultural Center. Um, a, as often happens in Second Life, things don't, don't last forever. We like to use forever terms, but they don't really last forever. And and uh, the, the term of West of Ireland came to an end in that form. And we um, realigned ourselves with the Community Virtual Library in uh, September of 2009. And we've been resident at uh, the Community Virtual Library on, on one or the other of their sims. They're now down to a, to a single sim um, ever since. We uh, present primarily, we present literature. Um, but we also uh, do some traditional telling. We, we um, have author, some author events. Uh, we have some poetry and et cetera that we do. We present, depending on the week, between five to eight um, hours worth of live programming um, and, and with emphasis on live performance. Um, as I said yesterday, uh, it's not that I have anything against um, uh, recorded things. It's that that's just not what we do. Um, I think there's a certain intimacy and immediacy to doing live performance in the virtual world. And, and so that's kind of what our focus is. Uh, we want to bring stories um, and literature to life for people um, to inspire them to seek out um, authors, books, write their own things, share stories with other people. Um, because we, we think that stories are an important part of what it is to be you and what it is to be me and, and how we function in our worlds, both real and, and virtual. So, so that's what we do. Um, uh, we don't have any yeah. deep. Po yeah, we don't have any deep pockets. You know, we we, uh, <laughs> we the reason uh, honestly, the you know, we're on the CVL because we create traffic. <laughs> you know, that that we're a great tenant. We we take care of. We we're we, we're completely self sufficient. Um, we're responsible tenants, and we create traffic. When we moved to our current home on Imagination Island, the uh, the sim traffic went up seventy percent. So. Um, yeah, so we so we we create traffic, um, but in terms of of uh, you know we have an 850 meter square parcel that we have built the heck out of that has six different um, places where we can tell stories at six different sort of venue settings. In uh -oh. addition to that, we apply some, anywhere from simple props to elaborate sets um, to our main story area on a regular weekly basis, and. Um, so, uh, uh, but there's only so much that we can do. Um, we don't like it. We don't have deep pockets. None of us, none of us are fronting the cost for this. Um, we get tips, but none of that go to pay for any overhead or any expansion. That all goes to um, uh, to the charity because we we have a featured charity every, every that enables us. That's tied to how we're able to present copyrighted material in the way in which we do. So um, now you've. You, you've actually been, um, is it seven or eight years you've been going in Second Life? Six. Six. Just so, uh, six. I can hear this lot I've had an avatar here, actually, so there you go. Now, you do, um, you, um, I was going to ask you about um, Open Sim and other grids, because I know, um, I know that you have a, a base also in Kitely, right. um, which I gather uh, that, that presumably is just doing similar things on the hypergrid. Um, yeah, we, we actually saw um, uh, uh, Kitely as an opportunity for us to do some things more extensively than we're able to in Second Life, um, uh, to go for more fully immersive environments, um, and to and, and the fact that, that Kitely went on the hypergrids uh, was just an added bonus to that. Um, we all sort of envision the possibilities that uh, something that I've tested here a little bit in Second Life was something called the Dickens Project, which there's been two of them now, um, mm -hmm. which is the ability to walk around a fully, I mean, what we do is fairly presentational, somewhat like what we're doing here, where people are sitting in chairs and, and being well behaved, um, which is great. 
Um, but we also have envisioned, uh, both Shandon Loring and I, the possibility of creating an environment where people can walk around while listening to a live presentation. Um, mm -hmm. And where they can click on, on things that you, you can um, pretty much span the experience of people who just want to listen to the language and enjoy the ambience of, of whatever environment you've created to the people who, who want to click on things and look at links and, and want to multitask. Um, that's a great thing about uh, a virtual performance is, is really the experience is, is, is user tailored on their end. And, um, mm -hmm. and so, and Kitely enables us to do that just, just by the way that, that uh, the economics are and, and how it's structured. And so we're at the, we're at the moment, we haven't done a grand opening. We have uh, one of their worlds, one of their four region worlds. And then we have a bunch of themed worlds that you can, um, uh, you can, you can teleport directly from our main LZ to, um, we have a, a Western world and um, a winter world and an October world and I'm building some stuff in Celtic world and um, all of these are yeah yeah all of these are meant to be um, uh, uh, complementary environments where we can read somewhere on the main world in the library even which is what we do here. Um, <laughs> There was a great deal of conversation when we went this about about not simply replicating on the hypergrid in OpenSim what we do in Second Life, but finding a way to do do what we do now in a new way. And I think that's what mm -hmm. our our and we're in the middle of shakedown cruise now. We're we're testing what works and and um, of course it's it's like it's like going to Disney World after you've been in Disneyland. Everything looks somehow familiar, but not quite. No, no. It's sort of a little surreal. You come around a corner expecting something and, and find that really that's not the way it is. So, um, so we're kind of in shakedown cruise and, uh, and then we'll, we'll have a grand opening soon and, and a little more aggressively, I think, in the fall, start to program in Kitely. Great. Now, um, the other thing, that, before we go into a uh, greater discussion, the other thing that came up yesterday, which uh, you're welcome to promote, is um, you are a, very much a storyteller yourself. You were talking about these various trilogies of Irish tales and oh, cat, yeah. cat, cat, cat tales. Uh, we love our cats here. <laughs> and, uh, um, that, and you do actually have books on uh, Amazon and things of your own, don't you? I do, and, and I got to give a lot of credit to Second Life and, the, and Virtual Worlds for leading me toward that, because it really has been, um, it really has all been part of the same journey. I started self-publishing, um, uh, my, my real name is Judith Cullen. If you search for Judith Cullen on Amazon, you'll find me and, and a few other people. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I started self-publishing in March of 2013, and I have four books in an anthology, a fifth book that's about to release, and a sixth one that I'm in the middle of um, right now, writing. So, and they're not long books. They're actually, they're commuter books. You know, they're, 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 um, uh, they're not meant to be war and peace. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they're meant to be something that you can easily read on a commute or that you can tuck in a bag and, you know, et cetera. Um, and, and or most indeed, or indeed at one of your own meetings. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. Uh, um, uh, and uh, they've all, it's all been all been part of the same journey, so which has been great. Um, so yes, yes, I do, um, I do, I do self-publish, and I credit that to spending you know 500 hours plus over the last six years reading other people's writing, most of which is better than mine. But but still, you know, stories start to become an ingrained part of your daily life, and uh, I, it's uh, hard for me to imagine. It's hard for me to imagine taking a vacation from it. Yeah. Well, it's a great way to, you know, a bit like Second Life itself, it's a great way to escape into your own mind, your own world, isn't it? And to just, you know, um, chill out as you put these things on paper. We all think everybody else is better than us, so. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's, um, I'd, I'd like to bring uh, um, everybody else in a bit here. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the thing, you know, we've got, um, I suppose, two two major things um, on our mind, especially to do with lender lamps at the moment. One, of course, is the <laughs> dubious timing of their news about a new platform that has, of course, got the all Second Life residents in a flurry 
um, either approving or disapproving. Um, and uh, bearing in mind, we don't know that much. And of course, we've had the second live birthday uh, where, where you spoke and, uh, uh, um, yesterday. Have you been, um, have, uh, have you had the chance to go around the birthday builds and things in Second Life uh, prior to yesterday? Okay, Danny. Me? No, no. I, I actually haven't had a lot of chance. I did yesterday. I did take a lot. It's always I always find um, Second Life uh, the the SLB celebrations interesting and and what people um, actually manage to do and the breadth of mm. creativity, visual creativity um, that you see is really quite astounding. Yeah, it's astonishing. I, I was fortunate that um, I was on sort of Tara's team and I was um, I got in there before it opened. So I did. It. A sort of quick tour and saw some wonderful things. Although, of course, since it's opened, I've been stuck in one place with a camera, but that's okay. not a matter of entirely. <laughs> I think it's interesting. Um, I think you can't help but, but n I mean, mind you, I think, I think my understanding is um, the whole thing about uh, the new Second Life 2.0 has, has, has been mentioned for over two years. I mean, it, it, it's come up. Mm. It's not brand new. But I think you can't ignore the timing of of the announcement with um, with the hypergrid going on in in the open sim um, grids, you know um, something um, something um, uh, uh, other people may have their thoughts on this, and we did discuss it last week. But um, I still haven't quite figured whether the breaking of this news was a sort of bit of an accident um, or um, or not, um, especially compared with the. Um, you know, sort of running concurrently with the uh, birthday celebrations. Mm -hmm. um, it started, um, I mean, this is a project, incidentally, that was initiated back in the days of, uh, well, <laughs> not that long ago, really, but Robbie Linden was around, um, you know, developing things. So it's been inherited by Ebby uh, Linden to a certain extent. Um, uh, but, you know, he was at a developer's meeting and he was talking to... Sorry. Now, uh, yeah. uh, uh, he actually addressed this issue. He said that he spent the week talking to the media about this, and and so uh, after doing all the media uh, calls about it, he decided to talk about it to the developers as well. If you oh, noticed, okay. if you noticed, a whole bunch of stories came out about Second Life working on next gen platform in yeah. the big tech publications. Absolutely. Now they came out a little later after the developers meeting, but the actual interviews for them were done earlier. So um, we tend to forget that uh, there's other publications out there besides Hypergood Business and New World Notes, Daniel Voyager, and <laughs> the SL Universe uh, forums. But yeah. uh, he actually went out to the other folks first. So, okay, um, I, I must say I wondered about that. So you cleared that mm -hmm. up because it all happened very rapidly. And, yeah. um, it, uh, you know, I, I, so for a while I wondered, you know, well, the devs let it out to the community uh, that people know, the, the people who are concerned talk about it, then the mainstream press got it, but it obviously it's not that way around. Yeah. But yes, um, you know, there was even the Voices of PR podcast that came out with every during the week, which had been filmed way back at um, uh, the um, Silicon Valley Virtual Worlds Conference, which was very interesting because even exactly. there he was talking about his priority is to bring things fast and furious online. And he's going to worry about compatibility and stuff like that later. He wants to get the stuff out first, you know. Right. Um, you know, so um, it's very odd, though, because um, almost all the talks we've been filming at the Second Life Birthday Build, um, most have been hosted by Safia, um, some of the artists' ones by uh, Tara Lynn. And um, the question about what do you think about, you know, Next World or whatever has come up at all of these, regardless of the sort of topic of conversation with the, the interviewees. And um, clearly, um, you know, clearly there's a, a diverse amount of opinion here. I'd, uh, I hope maybe next week or something we'll get Callie Klein on because um, it was noted that her operation with the Kitty Cats, for example, relies, you know, very much on a back end database that's on the web. And, um, you know, uh, she was talking about the possibilities of, you know, a, a new world would not necessarily uh, corrupt that business, even if the actual, you know, um, avatar pussycats or, or the, the, the can't be transferred, you know, you can still create new ones and operate with the same database on the web. Um, so, you know, a lot of content creators are saying, oh, you know, I won't be able to take my content and I'm staying with Second Life and whatever, whereas other people, 
are rightfully thinking, I think, well, yeah, great, it's a new platform. You know, we've got Hyperdosy coming up, we've got Next Life, or <laughs> whatever it is coming up, and i um, getting very excited about it because, in a way, the more avenues, the merrier. And it, it was certainly um, hinted at in one of the things that Ebby said that he's talking about something where an Explorer version will be available on the web, even if it will take an offline a dedicated client to do things like building. So or obviously thinking uh, in multiple strands there, you know, about Which is sort the of same approach, approach that High Fidelity has as well. Yes, I wonder how much the development of these may be linked, but we don't know anything about that. I suspect there's a little bit of crossover going on somewhere. Um, it seems uncannily, um, you know, uh, timing, given that Lindens are invested along with Google in High Fidelity. And um, for its connection with Second Life, of course. Um, or, we, or, could we simply, or it could simply be that everyone just has mm. the same ideas all at the same time, which always happens. Indeed. And, you know, the, uh, the Oculus Rift sagas and everything else have made everything, um, you know, viral when it comes to virtuality, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I um, guess my, my sense is that, uh, that, you know, the announcement, how that it was, it's interesting to find out, Marie, that in fact, he had been talking with media folks before the uh, the developer meeting, but my my suspicion would be that a they've been working on it for a while, and b we've got another hype cycle going on oh. around virtual mm -hmm. reality, and so it's it would be foolish for Linden Lab not to say something that they're working on a next gen. Mm -hmm. uh, it exactly. just you know it's it's yeah. it's good timing in the big picture. Mm -hmm regardless of what internal reactions might be from individual Second Life users and fans and fanatics and naysayers. Yeah. And <laughs> it, it's, it, it, uh, as always, it's like terms of service and everything else, you know. I mean, the Second Life users, and they're basically they're called residents, but they're users. You're using a web server and you've got a web service. And they are very passionate. It's something to do with the, 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 you know, the immersion and the, the, the presence we all feel. And um, but as a result, you know, the, you probably get more furore about little things on a platform like this than you would, you know, in anything that was, you know, that you wouldn't get this on a, an ordinary website that was going to revamp itself, for example. Well, um, you, well, it, it, it has to do with whether we've got a platform or a product. If hmm. if you've got a video game that's coming out with a new version. And you have to start all over again at the beginning with a new character and, and play it. People are not going to complain. That's, that's how video games work. That's how products work. So Sims 2 is not backwards compatible with Sims 1. No matter how much money you spend in Sims 1, you go to Sims 2 and you start over again, right? Mm. So, so, so that's the typical product evolution. But platform evolution happens much, much more slowly because you have uh, the, the bigger, the more the constituents you have on the platform, the slower it's going to move. So the World Wide Web, for example, uh, moves extremely slowly because it has to get all these different groups working together, moving in the same direction. So, for mm -hmm. example, Flash came out, what, 15 years ago. We're only now starting to get that functionality in HTML5 because everybody has to get on board. The benefits of having a broad-based platform is that you, you, you move slowly, but you can go a lot farther. So um, it, you, you could make a much bigger impact. So the question is, is Second Life a platform or a product? And I think a lot of the original hype was because Second Life was a platform and the creators were partners who, who counted for something, just like on the web, or if, you're, if you have Microsoft you're running Windows, all, all, all the software partners, they're important. Or if you're iPhone with the App Store, the developers are important because they, they, they create this big, wide ecosystem around your platform and make your platform mm -hmm. that much more valuable. I, the, uh, App, Apple is not going to come out with iTunes version 2.0 that's totally incompatible with everything that came before because it would destroy all those relationships. So the, mm. the question is, are the creators in Second Life users of a platform like players in Sim 2 are, 
or are they partners? I mean, are they, so are they users of a product, or are they partners in a platform? And I think over time, uh, I think people in Second Life started to, to some degree, uh, I mean, obviously it's argue, people argue both, both ways, but, but to me it seems like it started out more as if the creators were partners in building a platform, and over time it has moved to the creators are customers of a product. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, the, the, the yeah. yeah. The user creative world thing still still exists, but you know the the, the perception of it is um, well, it's not publicly realised that you know um, you know the greater public. I mean, don't realise that you know they, they they sometimes look at the screen of Second Life and think it's a, a game or some kind of exploratory thing. They don't realise how empowering it is for people in there to build and create their own thing. Um, but you know that's always been a factor in Second Life, and I wonder when Abby says. The new platform is going to, is being built in the spirit of Second Life. Um, whether the idea is to create a user creative platform that the, shares that commonality with Second Life, but there's something ju that is just fit for the future um, per se. And uh, I suspect that um, mesh, in fact, will have a lot to do with this. We're getting increasing mesh in Second Life, and I gather the new platform will uh, feature a, a lot of mesh, as will indeed High Fidelity. So, you know, it's, it's almost it's almost lurking in the background here that everybody's saying mesh, you know, um, is, is the future, and maybe variations on that. But so, um, uh, coming back to... Uh, so, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry Mary. I was going to say, it's, it's really too early to tell. I mean, Blue Mars had mesh... Cloud Party mm. had mesh and a web browser. Um, the, those kinds of things aren't really enough. Um, it's it, it's not the. I mean, Second Life is not about the technology. It's about the community, and everybody yeah. knows this. Uh, is there is there going to be enough on a new platform to make the community move over? Um, if it, I I, th I think that if the destination was a platform platform, then that mm. might help people do that, but. I think because of the way the transition's being managed, um, it might send off signals that, no, this is a product, that one's going to be a product, Oops. you're just going to be cogs Co in a product, not partners in a platform. Okay. And at that point, do you really want to invest a lot of time and energy in learning a new platform if you're mm. not really co-creating it, if, you're, if you yourself are the product? You know, like, like in Sims, you can build a little house but you know it's going to mm. disappear with the next update. So mm. how much, how much effort are you really going to put into it? In Minecraft, you can build stuff, but it all goes away. So um, you know when you restart the game. So is that? I am. Anyway. I think, yeah, it, it's, it's persistency, isn't it? Because um, you know, I I don't know what the future holds, but when I see a platform I can go into and snoop around and have a little bit of fun exploring, fine. But I'm probably not going to go back there if it's the same old thing. Whereas if I can put my mark on that community, on that platform and do things and there's a permanence to it, then it attracts me because it's, it's a place I will quite happily go quite often to do things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not just open it up and um, look around. Um, <clears throat> Pet love and indeed Caledonia. What are your what, what are your thoughts? So, I know Caledonia, for example, you know you've you've clearly seen an opportunity with Kindly, mm -hmm. um, albeit that platform um, similar, if not the same as Second Life. Um, how, how do you feel about um, you know new platforms popping up, and would they would they potentially interest you, or is it a well, wait and see? I, I think it's a wait and see. I think there's always whenever there's an announcement. I, I, I you know after six years in Second Life. Um, I can't tell you the number of panics I've seen, um, <laughs> and 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 with every panic, there's always some amount of truth and some amount of just overreaction. Um, uh, you know, we went to Kitely because Kitely enables us to do some things that we can't do in Second Life. But a a as we, as as I have now heard Ebby say several times in several different media, and which we said to our own folks. Um, when we started opening up Kitely, we're not abandoning Second Life. You know, we spent six mm. years building a, a brand and an identity, for want of a better, you know, a less corporate phrase, um, mm. uh, and, and a community, because this is all about social. 
Uh, it's yeah, all I about social interaction. Um, uh, we've built that in Second Life, and, and why on earth would we just cut ourselves off and go somewhere else? Um, this is all about, about new opportunities, not about forgetting the core of what we are. So, um, so I, I, I mean, just as I don't see us stopping operations in Second Life anytime soon, I don't see, I don't see the original Second Life going away. Um, I can't imagine that after 11 years, um, they may want to start fresh with, with, with uh, you know, with a new start um, with something else. But I don't think that they're, I, I don't see the lights going off anytime soon mm. on this grid. <laughs> I think um, it I seems think too, it's, it's too damn profitable. You know, I mean, it, it just doesn't yeah. make economic sense. You know, how, well, that, how many, that's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's or, or right. Let's, you know, let's let's take another example. How many people use the vintage skin on Phoenix? You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, the, which was yeah, that was my first viewer was was uh, you know that type of skin. Yeah, um, uh, in order to have sixty thousand uh, people logged in from all over the world at any one time, you have to appeal to a broad base of quirks, if you will, um, you know, uh, tendencies, the way people simply process information. And, and so I don't see them quite limiting themselves just yet. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, it is a massive investment. And, you know, mm -hmm. we've talked before about how much of the, you know, everything from the economy to the land sales or sort of rental, which is what it is, you know, they control an awful lot. They do make, you know, they, they don't have the, the whole web <laughs> coming into mm -hmm. Second Life, but they do make a lot of money with their with, with the market they've got. It's not inconsiderable. So right. and, it's, and it would be crazy to... And they're know, the biggest They're the that. biggest game. I mean, not game. Sorry, that's, a, that's an unfortunate choice. <laughs> They are the biggest player, yeah. <laughs> and it would be a mistake when there's so much um, testing and innovation going on below them, if you will. It would be a mistake for them to be seen as static and not trying new things and simply trying to maintain what they have. That's not a healthy place to be when you're at the top of the heap. That's well, not exactly. the way to be the industry leader. You know, so so that's that ties back to my statement. I think you know, with all the 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 news about hypergridding and things like that, that it would have been a mistake for um, Second Life to have just for Linden Labs to have just gone. Well, happy birthday! We've been doing this for eleven years, um, yeah. without coming out with something a little more dynamic about and forward looking. Um, mm. Whether that was a conscious choice or or happened incidentally, uh, I think actually doesn't matter. But well, um, the flavor, the flavor, the, flavor, the mainstream. Um, uh, coverage on this, um, which of course Mar Maria put in context earlier, has all been fairly positive. It's along the lines of, you know, the um, the creators of Second Life, um, you know, Linda Labs, uh, working on something new and revolutionary that will work with all this new VR stuff. And the same has been happening with Hypothetic. In fact, I've read a couple of articles that seem to be getting mixed up. They, they're sort of talking to Philip Rosedale one minute and then every <laughs> elbow the next. And, mm -hmm. You know, uh, both both um, the mainstream is actually giving publicity to both of these in a way. So, do, you know, they are, yes, I certainly think it's a good thing. Pedlo, have you got any thoughts on the <laughs> next life? <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Who doesn't? <laughs> I, I I agree with everything that Caltania said. There are a lot of people who will, will re overreact. There are a lot of people who will benefit um, just from the mental exercise of having something new to do. And also that... SL does need to continue to be the industry leader. Um, I think it's all good. We, we've always muddled through, and I think we always will. That's that's yeah, what I think. I think, <laughs> I think so, too. Well, we've got about um, 10 minutes left before Caledonia has to go. Um, what I suggest now is, uh, Maria, um, we've got a mass of stuff um, uh, <laughs> news-wise to bring in. Maybe um, uh, there, there are a few things there that maybe you'd just like to outline in... in um, uh, brief, so to speak, and while Cardone is here, um, she, she can join in the conversation about uh, any other things on the agenda there, um, as far as hypergridding and stuff is concerned. So I'll hand it to you. Um. Uh, well, uh, one thing that I'd like to remind her, in case she, she, she's not aware, is that there's four days left for proposals for the Open Sim Community Conference. Well, less than four days, oh, yeah. three days now. So, um, thank you for that. Uh, so, uh, what you guys are doing is really interesting for the community track. 
Um, and uh, we are still looking for proposals until end of day on July 1st. Uh, <laughs> and that applies to everybody out there. Uh, you can be on a panel, you can do a Q&A, you can do a full presentation. Um, lots, lots of choices. Email me, maria at hypergroupbusiness.com with your idea if you don't want to fill out the whole proposal thing or you can go online if you have a proposal that you're ready to go with and, and submit it. So uh, time is running out. Um, and um, uh, uh, we, and a, a follow up to a story from last week, uh, Avi Worlds, uh, the rumor I heard today is that they're closed again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you don't know this story. Abby Worlds has bought me. We've, we have long since renamed it the Yo-Yo Bridge. Because it's up one week and gone another, and then up another, and down another. And it just seems to persist, come bouncing back up, even though. How it's spontaneous of them. But the, the thing I don't understand is that when, when another grid goes down, say they're switching servers, they're hosting providers, or whatever. They put up a sign that says, sorry, we're down for maintenance, or sorry, we're down for server migration. They move the databases over, they move the users over, you know, they, they, they keep a running update of what's going on through the social media so nobody feels isolated, everybody knows what's going on, and then they're back up again. Every world, every single time, they close all their social media accounts, they close <laughs> the user accounts, they delete the databases, delete everybody's inventory and builds, and then they pop back up again a few days later. Is that I, your I, idea I, of housekeeping? I mean, what, no, what's I, this? I, I no, can't not even a sign that says, hi, we've gone fishing and we're gits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. I mean, I can't, I, can't, I, can't even, I can't even conceive of the mindset that would take this approach for this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, it's uh, well, amazing. Um, yeah, well, they'll be back and they'll be gone. <laughs> they'll be back <laughs> and they'll be gone, no doubt. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that um, you, you covered, actually, in Hypergo Business, of course, was uh, uh, um, Firefox to bring virtuality to the web. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, uh, they're working on a couple of different things here. Now, the one that I highlighted is WebGL. So WebGL and HTML5, as I mentioned earlier, is a way to bring nice graphics to the web, including 3D graphics. And Cl Cloud Party used this to create a second lifestyle virtual world right in the browser, no download required. It was very, very cool. Yahoo bought them earlier this year, closed it down. Now, yeah. with, with this new technology, with, with a built-in support for the Oculus Rift, what would happen was you, you could pull up the, uh, the Cloud Party world, put on the headset, and it would automatically switch you to a VR em em embedded view. And it will make it very easy for developers building things like Cloud Party to include Oculus Rift support without having to worry about things like pre-distorting the stereo images. Because what you do is you don't just have two identical copies of, of the picture that you have um, side by side you you have there are slightly the cameras are slightly moved over and then they're distorted so that when a lens looks at it it undistorts them and fills your whole uh whole view so it's a very tricky little geogra geometric geometry thing and this would be built into it um also the sensors would be built in like where are you looking all, all that kind of stuff that's that's in the uh, oculus rift so the hard part will be done for you, and you can build these new, cool, new virtual world applications right in Firefox. And the folks at Chrome um, and, and on the Google side are also looking at it, um, so that's very interesting. Uh, and the other side of it is that, well, what if you're looking at a regular web page, not a virtual world, right? How is that going to look like? And so that. it would also provide a 3D view of regular websites. Now that is actually fascinating because I had um, I had an application, a web browser, on. I still got it on my machine, I think, which is old from years ago. Mm -hmm. And all it actually did is it rendered web pages in 3D. So you would go to a website, you know, any website. It would pre-cache the content, 
and it would display it on 3D screens so that you could walk around the contents of the website in, in, a, in a 3D form and then zoom in on the screen you wanted to actually read, which I thought was a marvelous trick, though, you know, it didn't have a community or anything. It was just down to the client. It interpreted right. on screen a web page. But um, Caledonia, while you're still here, I know you, we're going to have to say goodbye in <laughs> really a second. Um, how, um, does the idea of... Um, virtual worlds um, accessed by the web. I mean, we've talked about the hypergrid, but would, um, for your purposes, for example, would you be keen on something that allowed you to bring these things into the web rather than be standalone? Um, oh, I think, I think, you know, it, 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 standard, standard um, um, operating procedure years ago when we all started developing web pages was the fewer clicks, the better. And I think, mm. I think that, that, that that applies here where you know they, right now somebody has to come in even people that I know who have gaming backgrounds if they come into a virtual world they gotta learn how it works and I think the fewer clicks you get between an interested mind and and access to the content um, the more you're gonna see virtuality thrive and certainly there's a lot of potential there so so yeah I'm interested to see I don't think we're exchanging rings and making promises but I'd be interested to see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, when you said, when you were talking about your, your, your 3D content viewer, I suddenly went, God, you know, how many times am I on a web page and I, and I reach for rotate and it's not there? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank and you. I want to yeah. stretch it, but I can't. So, so I think that's really, you know, I think that uh, is really interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, really the, interesting to see where that goes. This is like me on the, uh, when I'm watch it, watching a machinima video, I keep the option right clicking. <laughs> I'm wondering why I'm not panning around. I know exactly. Now, uh, uh, this is just a guess, but what I'm guessing is that what we're going to have is something like what Google was talking about with their with the picture viewer or what Bloomberg has with their with their new VR terminal, which is that oh, in an Oculus Rift, which you have is basically an infinite screen or you know 360 degree screen all around you. So what they could do, for example, is every tab can have its own screen in front of you and you can look at the one you, you want to look at. So that right now switching tabs is, is a little cumbersome. So here you would just switch tabs by turning your head slightly. Uh, so I could see that as being, as if you're already using a virtual world headset or if you're already in a virtual world, having a built-in browser like that might make research interest, interesting. It mm -hmm. wouldn't be the reason that I would get a 3D viewer because they're expensive and a 2D web is just fine. It's really optimized for text and images the way it is now. Uh, but if I had a, a headset on already and I was already in world for other stuff I was working on, then having uh, the, this kind of uh, okay, a war uh, game kind of setup. <laughs> Okay, um, I'll just interrupt because I know Caledonia has to go. She's got to go off and search for Sherlock Holmes or something as well. Uh, yes. um, so uh, b before she does, I'd really like to uh, thank you for coming, uh, Caledonia. Oh, and, uh, and a wonderful talk yesterday, which we will be uh, seeing soon. And, um, well, in fact, you can already find it up at slartis.com, of course, uh, for uh, instant replay. And um, I hope you'll be able to come back and join us soon. Um, so many things to discuss and never enough time, so to speak. I would love to. The next four hours, I'll think of things that I thought I should have said that I did. <laughs> you back As I and then you can just stuff. come back. <laughs> oh, right. Thanks before, for having me. It was, it was oh, great and, to be here. Thank you. And before you leave, please email me event announcements and open sim so I can add you guys to our calendars. Okay. We'll do Excellent. that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Many thanks. And um, before we continue, welcome to everybody in the channel, by the way. Um, Serena Jules just joined us. We've got La Pisian as ever and uh, Daniel Voyager and um, quite a few others by the look of it. So um, keep those questions and comments coming. We're always watching the channel chat as well. Okay, Maria, sorry to interrupt there, but um, carry on. Carry on. In fact, you might as well carry on with all the news now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so I was saying you, it's like a, one of those military war rooms where you have all those screens up and you have instant access to all this information. So I'm a big fan of that. I, I kind of see myself as a general someday. Uh, so so th that would be like very, very cool thing um, to have. And I, I, would, I would enjoy having that. You, so, said, you, see, you just said you see yourself as a general someday. 
Yeah, not not like a real <laughs> world general, but you know, an imaginary yeah, I one. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I mean, like the a idea. Is video game general. <laughs> yeah. Now, to, to be honest, the idea. I, I mean, I think it was Dayton, <clears throat> the company um, in the Midlands over in the UK that does a lot of um, you know visualization of data in yes, um, virtual spaces. Um, I think it was them that came up with this term about the war room, the war room. And I always thought, you know, they, it is a serious company and they're going on about war rooms and war games. Uh, but well, it's, you know, it's a metaphor, really. I mean, I, yeah. it, you know, my, my home in Second Life, you know, the, the, the well, the, the office I've got, uh, got in the house with Tara is, um, you know, uh, Tara will tell you, you know, I just go, you know, I thought, well, you know, I've got four prim walls, thank you. And I'll put a different media on every wall. I'll be Twitter feeds, my news feeds. And, you know, it was my, you know, that, you know, as a metaphor, you know, it was my war room. It was a newsroom, actually, but I mean, it was. Yes, that's, yeah. that, that, that's a little more accurate. I have the same thing in my virtual office. I have a whole bunch of screens and I have all, all the stuff that I'm working on, on on different screens all around me. Yeah. And uh, I enjoy that very much. Okay, so summer events are coming up. Uh, I, I posted the article up a day early. I normally don't post it until the first of the month, but I wanted to get it out in time for the show. So OS Grid is the big news. They're having a big birthday bash, and uh, I embedded a couple of uh, videos of some of the exhibits um, that they have. Uh, for, there's 4th of July celebrations going on. Littlefield is going to be uh, one that I recommend people stop by. Uh, one nice thing that's happening is that Tangle Grid, uh, their small size commercial grid, they were going to have a steampunk exhibition this coming week. They have hypergrid enabled it. So anybody oh. can teleport in and see it without having to create an account on the grid. So wonderful way to show off the grid. Uh, people mm. are already teleporting in. It's already going on and it's going to be going on until um, the end of the week. Um, so um, we, 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 yeah, actually, even and, and a plus point as well. We we um, we got a video of that coming, uh, which will probably be on we can review tomorrow. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Uh, th there's a hypergood safari group that just launched, um, and they they do their hypergood travels every Wednesday, kind of a successor to the old, what was it, the hypergood uh, vacationers Tra club. Or yeah. something, something, uh, okay. explore, explorers, explorers, yes. Club. That was right, yeah. Yes, was that Pathfinder, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they meet uh, every Wednesday at noon Pacific on the Magicka region of OS Grid, and then they set off from there. And I will be one of their, uh, one of their, um, um, participate uh, on one of their things. They're going to come visit Hyperica at the end of the month right. on July 30th. So, which means that I've got to get my redesign done by then, and hopefully that'll be just the fire that I need burning <laughs> under my feet. <laughs> apparently, actually, yeah, apparently yeah. during the week, um, the um, um, non-profit yeah. commons that uh, Joyce Bettencourt and others are involved with in Second Life, um, they, they have a meeting every Friday and they have one on the hypergrid, and they, they um, I meant to join them, but of course with the birthday filming and everything else, I couldn't. They, but. Um, they apparently spent half an hour learning about the hypergrid in Second Life, and then they took them on a tour, um, a hypergrid tour. Um, so they sort of launched, I presume they collapsed from Second Life and launched into a different viewer, but I mean, apart from yes, that, they yes. just, they <laughs> just, they just, they just uh, started in Second Life and then jumped over there to, to have a, a little tour. So that was good news too. Yep. All right, uh, let's see what else. Uh, so the Kitely calendar is continuing to add stuff. Um, that was interesting. The, their big thing uh, this uh, last two weeks is that the number of exportable items dropped a little bit in their Kitely market. And so uh, I was surprised by this because normally the numbers have been going up. And what happened was that um, earlier in June, they switched their pricing model so that free users could no longer get their metered regions and a few merchants left because of that and a bunch of new merchants replaced those so the total number of product variations has actually gone up uh, but the the new merchants haven't export enabled their items yet and um, and Kitely tells me that 
uh, as as the merchants get used to the system and 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 um, you know start uh, start getting familiar with hyper good and exports, uh, that number should go up uh, again. So we'll we'll see how it how it starts looking uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the summer once the repercussions of the new pricing change have uh, fully worked their way through. Now, merchants can still continue to have a store on the Kindly market for free. Uh, Kindly has several sandboxes specifically set aside for merchants to build on. Um, and uh, there's no cost to upload things to the Kindly market. Uh, but it is, of course, nice to have your own region as a warehouse that is a building platform that's private and totally your own. Um, so, um, so that's something that's um, uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, the successful merchants can, of course, aff afford a region, but people who are just trying it out, uh, maybe they'll be a little bit more hesitant. Uh, now, one thing people can do is they can build, of course, on local copies of OpenSIM on their own computer and then upload stuff to Kitely. And mm. this is what I recommend people do for all closed grids, whether it's InWorlds or Second Life or any other grid, build locally, sell globally, you know. Do yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> but do not build on a closed grid because you can't make backups. Yeah. And, and it's the advantage too. If, I mean, I mean, if you're building locally using, say, prims or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are ways. For example, of create, um, as long as it's all your own, you can actually um, convert a prim-based um, structure into mm -hmm. mesh, and that mesh may be useful for you later if you want to put it in high fidelity or a mesh-based um, well, platform. The other good thing about building locally is you can have a team of subcontractors building everything for you and you own it because they're oh, yes. for you. Whereas in Second Life, if you have a group of people building for you, whether you're, it's your students because you're a teacher or whether it's subcontractors, um, no matter what license terms, no matter what work, work agreements you have with them, you still can't export the stuff because it's got multiple creators. So um, it's a nightmare for people who build in groups on closed grids. Well, on a private grid, um, you, I mean, you take care of the license agreements, um, yeah. and then you just build, and, and, and you own the whole grid. So everything on it, you own it, and you can export it any way you want to. Absolutely. Now, while you're on, Ki while you're on Kitely, mm -hmm. um, I was intrigued by the announcement um, of um, exporting to high fidelity, a very early announcement. Yes. So, um, uh, so that was earlier uh, earlier this week. Um, they said that they're working with high fidelity. The fact they've donated a couple of bug fixes to high fidelity source code already. Uh, and, the, and the reason they could do that is because high fidelity is open source. Um, and they're planning to, since they want to have delivery to as many different places as possible, uh, they're planning to have delivery to um, high fidelity as well. So I asked them about delivery to Second Life, and, uh, and not so much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Inevitable. Uh, the gate's well, locked. <laughs> they, they, would like, they would like to, but uh, the problem is that uh, Linden Lab can shut that off at any second. And they don't want to spend time and effort building a marketplace that delivers to Second Life, only to have everything wasted because Linden Lab turns it off. And the way Linden Lab works, of course, they've been direct competition to the marketplace there. So you can it, that's why, yeah, that's yeah. why they're likely to shut them down. Yeah. Um, so. Um, uh, but the okay. other, the other, the other thing, um, uh, which is top of the list here uh, that I mentioned uh, from your site earlier, is mm -hmm. game face. Game face. Oh right. Um, I, I, I'm so keen. I, I think I mentioned it before on the idea of a virtual world that's on my desktop that has links to like my local files and things, you know, and then can take me into the worlds. And this fascinates me because it sounds like it's quite literally building a virtuality operating system. It, it, it is exactly, they're exactly building a virtual reality operating system. Now, they're focusing it around games because, I mean, they have the word game right in the title. Uh, so, um, I don't know how, how generic it's going to be. But um, their idea is that 
uh, instead of clicking on icons on your desktop, you will actually select objects inside your virtual house. So you're, you're sitting on the couch, in front of you is a TV, you look at this TV, you activate it, and it plays your movies. Um, off, off behind it, you've got a bunch of arcade machines. You look at the arcade machine, you activate it, you play a virtual reality game. There's a PlayStation there on the table, you look at it, you activate it, it runs a PlayStation emulator. Um, you might have a door to another world, you go through that door, you're you know, teleporting to another world. They will have customizable avatars for this. Um, and they're already in talks with Second Life and High Fidelity to support teleports to Second Life and High Fidelity once all this technology hits the consumer market. And they're also extremely interested in OpenSim. The guy kept telling me that he couldn't be more in favor of an open source metaverse. Um, that he was like really, really big on it. Um, and that they will also be supporting OpenSim as well. Uh, in, in one of the interesting things that he said was that um, he's been working with Google on this. They've, Google has had them up in several times to show off their technology. And um, uh, he, he suggested that this is kind of Google's, Google does not really want to see a metaverse that's a proprietary metaverse owned by Facebook. Um, yes. <laughs> Google, is sure. a, Google is a fan of open source. Google is a fan of standards. It's a fan of, they're a fan of interoperability. Their Android operating system is open source. Um, and, they're, and if they're going to throw their weight behind something, they're going to throw their weight behind an open source, hyperlinked, open version of the metaverse. So I think that is extremely interesting. Yeah. He also talked to me about the hardware that goes into it um, and uh, the, the platform that they're building around it, which was also interesting. Um, it's, it's, they, they have a unique hardware system. Uh, all the other headsets either plug into a computer or they plug into a console or a cell phone plugs into them. So. Uh, they, they don't have their, you know, their, their own brains, kind of. Um, the, the brains are somewhere else. With the game face, they're, they're actually building the brain right into the device. Uh, they're taking um, the mobile chips, the Android operating system, all, all the sensors, and, and they're building the device from scratch right there. Uh, and the reason why they're not using a regular off-the-shelf cell phone, as, say, Google Cardboard is, is because uh, he explained the sensors in cell phones are good enough for cell phones, they're not good enough for virtual reality. And so they are able to have, um, by, com by combining and uh, picking and choosing the components, they're able to get a really high resolution screen. It's almost twice, twice the pixels of um, the Oculus or of a Project Morpheus. They're able to get the high-end sensors um, and they're able to get, uh, and they're writing custom uh, virtual operating system software for it. So um, it should be very, very interesting, very interesting operation. They're pricing it at 500 bucks for the developer kit. Um, but they say they want to have the consumer version cost as low as possible. Of course, everyone's saying that. Yeah. But in their particular case, they plan to make their money off of the platform. And that means that they're going to have an app store for apps, the same way that Apple has an app store for the iPhone, where mm. virtual reality developers can write, um, write software for this. They already support Unity. They're going to be rolling out support for the Unreal Engine in a couple of months, and they've got support for C++. I so, noticed, um, <laughs> actually uh, quite interesting, is, um, I noticed from your article that they've been looking at um, things like the Control Alt Studio Viewer. But the interesting thing about this, which actually differs from a lot of the announcements we've been getting recently, is that these guys are not on a Kickstarter or anything like that. It's not a new brainwave, is it? It's a, it's a fully bad project from the start. 
I didn't ask them about their funding sources. We, right. I, I, <laughs> well, I, I was too excited about the whole open sim thing. <laughs> well, there is something, you know, in the, the wake of Oculus Rift and everybody jumping in on this thing, you know, there seemed to have been an amazing amount of Kickstarters. And, you know, oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're almost all reaching their funding levels and planning ahead and stuff like that. But to me, this one struck out, it seemed to strike me as one that wasn't. And therefore, I thought, you know, the, here are some established players, um, you know, getting in. You're right. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, if, when I talk to him again, I will ask about that. All right. So, um, so that was fun and exciting. Um, did we talk last week about uh, the new arcade opening up in Boston? Actually, no we, um, no, we didn't. I had it on my list last week as a sort of anecdotal thing because I don't live in Boston. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, no, this idea of it's like the Internet Cafe for virtual worlds. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I really think there's a cool idea that uh, should be taken <laughs> off in a lot more places. Everyone's complaining that the stuff is expensive. And for the first few years, it is going to be too expensive for most people to use. I mean, if for something that makes you sick, if you spend too much time on it, that only has a few games available for it, why why would anybody spend, you know, a thousand bucks for the Omni treadmill, five hundred bucks for the game face, or three fifty for the Oculus Rift? And of course, you want the gloves, you want the controllers, I want everything else, just to play with it for a few minutes, right? So you can go into one of these cafes and you can play with all this equipment. And uh, because you're paying by the hour, you're not going to play that long. Um, they can afford to buy the high-end versions of everything because, uh, you know, they've, they've, they've it's, a, it's, it's a commercial operation. So unlike the consumer version, it, you know, where you want to buy the cheapest thing, they would, they would want to buy the most robust thing that would draw people in. Uh, so you can get to play with the latest hardware, the, the high-end hardware. Uh, play at uh, short periods of time, play with your friends, so you've got social momentum going on, you've got a low price, these guys are going to be charging nine bucks an hour. For nine bucks an hour, anybody can go in and play with virtual reality. Uh, and then in their case, they're getting the local tech firms already calling to reserve the facility during the day when it's otherwise going to be empty because they want to bring their staff in. And so I thought that was extremely cool. Uh, and, and I expect to see other people um, doing the same thing very quickly, uh, basically around the world, to get virtual reality out to as many people as possible, to get people to try it out, because you really do have to try it to understand what it's like. I've been trying to explain what Oculus is to just people, and it's really difficult. Yeah, I think this could be quite viral, you know, with if the hype about VR, um, you know, continues the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mentioned earlier it's like an internet cafe, and you got, you know, you got internet cafes popping up here, there, and everywhere. Less so now because most people have internet access, but you know, right. but there was that period when they didn't, and you know, they wanted to see what it was all about, or they were traveling, and you know, they needed these places, and before before long, you got whole chains opening up. Um, I forget yep. what the uh, Easy Net was one that was over <laughs> here, and you know, every, every so few miles you went, there was another branch of Easy Net, and it wasn't a cafe as such. They did sell coffee, but it was more like a, you know, a factory lineup right, of workstations. Right. It wasn't exactly environmentally pleasant, but it did its job, <laughs> and it got mass masses of customers because people mm -hmm. would just look up where the nearest easy net was. So, right. um, you know, exactly. maybe maybe we should start an easy worlds chain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you should. I really think you should. Uh, plus, you get help. So there's going to be a learning curve for this the first time we try this on. If you're there with your friends, a friend who's more knowledgeable can t take you through it, or the clerk can take you through it the first time, the first couple of times. So this helps get people over the price barrier, helps get people get over the fear of trying on new technology and the learning curve, and it helps provide social support for doing it as well. So um, I think it's a great idea. I don't know if the guy is going to be successful in being the first one. Um, but he's he's definitely um, aiming for that, so, and I think cardboard fil fits into that as well. The idea is to get as many people to 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 see what it's like. Um, now the the cardboard um, product isn't great because it's it's a case for a cell phone, 
So it has all the limitations of a cell phone based virtual reality headset. Uh, <laughs> like, like I mentioned earlier, the sensors aren't going to be as great. Um, it, the processing power isn't going to be as great. Um, the, the variety of applications isn't going to be as great. Uh, but it's, it's enough to give people the idea of what virtual reality is like. Um, and right I've now, um, it's very difficult for people to do that. You have to travel to a conference uh, to do that, um, to, to do, get a demo. Not everybody can do that. Well, with this cardboard thing, and you can you can make make it yourself. Or you can order it online for twenty five bucks. Um, get the kit, um, and that's something that's much much more accessible. In fact, I'm gonna get one. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's so cheap, and it's actually been getting um, after the novelty war. It's been getting some good reviews because apparently mm -hmm. the, the very last thing um, you snap into place is. Um, um, over the nose and it's some kind of magnetic sensor so that um, and that they say is the real magic because you can you literally sort of tap your nose and can move up and down and things or, or, yeah, or so, something so and it's, two... it's really the only it's the only part that you know it isn't easy accessible and here well, I they... thought that the <laughs> tapping one's nose is what Santa Claus did to move up the chimney <laughs> at the end of no, deliveries they, they have three <laughs> The, the, there's three parts in there that aren't cardboard. One is the lenses, and another another one is a magnet. It's on the side. What the magnet, little magnet, does is it acts the same way as pressing a mouse button does. And uh, you just toggle the magnet, and it kind of switches back to place, and it's, it acts just like a button. And it uses the phone's built-in compass to to say, you know, this is what I want. So the way it would work is you would look at something in world and then you would press this little button to, cho to choose it to, or to activate it or to move forward in that direction. Right. So you, you don't need to have any other peripherals um, to do everything you need to do in this world. The third piece they have is a little NFC chip and NFC stands for Near Field Communications. It's a oh, yeah. tiny little radio, super low power radio chip and what it does is it tells the phone to switch into virtual reality mode so that you put it in and it knows that it's in virtual reality. You take it out and it knows it's going to be in regular mode. <coughs> so it's very cool. And because uh, Google is releasing all the developer toolkits for this, now that's the big part of the announcement. I mean, the cardboard, yeah, that's cute. But the really important part was they're developing, releasing all the developer kits, the, the, the like I mentioned, the graphics distortion, the, the sensors, all that stuff, they're releasing that an easy to use or easy to use for developers, easy to use software the developers can use to, to, uh, to develop um, applications for this. They've open sourced the design of the cardboard and of the um, software. So that means that all the other manufacturers out there are probably going to be adding little magnets and little NFC chips to their cases as well, so that they're compatible, so they can all run in the same software. And it's, so that you don't have to keep taking, uh, right now you have to take the cell phone out of the case, hit hit the screen, to touch the screen to do whatever you want, and then put the cell phone back in the case again, which is a real pain in the butt. So It's a real, uh, um, uh, you know, we are, I have this around the corner, fortunately, a, a store called Maplin, which is a big chain of electronics components in Britain. That's where I got my leap motion and things like that. They, they tend to sell the bits that home tinkerers can work with. And it wouldn't surprise me to just see a, a kit that I can go and buy in somewhere like that shortly that will, you know, do that. But um, I would actually like to raise something else here, for, uh, worthy of discussion, I think, because I've been thinking about this myself. I mean, I, I lie around a lot, yeah, horizontal, with my, <laughs> with, my iPad, with my iPad on my lap, just going endlessly through feeds. And sometimes I, you know, get the old stomach ache and things. And I keep wondering if the radiation or whatever it is in the iPad being so close to me is affecting me. And Serene Jewell, who's in the uh, TV channel chat, has just um, said she's, I'm concerned with Google Cardboard and other products putting people's cell phones up against their skulls for long periods. Uh, radiation, etc. I'm not being paranoid. Okay. I think that. Uh, what thoughts do we have on that? I don't, I, I, I don't think yeah. she's being paranoid because there has yeah. been some research done, um, and looking at that, yeah, cell phone use with with particularly with kids and teenagers, 
and and um, and finding some some relevance to that uh, to that concern. Um, I, I that's have right. Quite a few, mm -hmm. I have read quite a few reports. Um, you know, sort of on um, you know the, uh, uh, close contact with body parts of a, a, a device like that can actually sort of you know affect you. Um, <clears throat> uh, on the, we, we on the plus side. The the fields drop uh, sorry the fields drop off quickly with distance, um, uh, so that uh, every single inch of distance that it's in front of you um, helps reduce the impact significantly. And you're not holding it directly up to your ear as you do when you talk. It's a couple of inches in front of your eyes. I don't know if that helps or not, but I mean I, I know it will help a little bit. I, I don't know if it'll help enough. I think the thing with all these mobile technologies is uh, due to their very nature, we tend to hug them quite close to ourselves. Um, not necessarily the eyes or the ears, but you know, the iPad is around stomach level and, and things like that, simply because you, 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 it's mobile tech. We don't really tend to put it down and walk away from it to work with it. I, I sleep um, with my cell phone, yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, well, that's... Um, I, don't, I don't do that. It's but my alarm I, I, clock. I, I'm, I'm resisting comments. <laughs> <laughs> What's its name? <laughs> I, I, I have a, I have an, I have a Wi-Fi extender right by my head in uh, in the bedroom, you know. So uh, you know, who knows what's, who knows what's going through my uh, mind while I'm busy dreaming or whatever. Yeah, I, I think it's something we should worry about. Um, I, you know, I, 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 I often say, and you know, other people have said this that if you go back a hundred years to the dawn of the motor car and you had been able to see in the future, they'd never have been legal. Um, <laughs> and, you know, um, all this wonderful technology, um, you know, it's a bit like medicines and things like that. They're supposed to go through trials before they go public, but a uh, lot of stuff doesn't really go... Well, you know, we're making huge progress uh, hour by hour, let alone by day by day. We're accelerating technology. Um, we're not allowing for the possibility of long-term effects of some of these things um, because they are simply coming online too fast and too quick, and we, we don't know how our bodies um, will have reacted to them in 30 years' time or something. So well, well, there's, it, it is a there's worry. Another, there's another aspect to that too, Mal, especially when you're, when you're talking about drugs. <clears throat> All the testing that's done is single drug testing. It's very simplistic. You know, yeah, it's accurate within the limitations of that particular drug. But who takes one drug? Yeah, Nobody. Very, yeah. Yeah. You know the, the 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 range of interactions, and you and you layer in environmental pollutions, you know all the stuff that we soak up from our food, from the air, from from living in a uh, in the in the culture we do. There's no way to test for all that stuff. Mm -hmm. There is no way. Well, yeah, for all those exactly. complexities. Um, yeah. Well, just uh, just in the, the pads I've got lying around, I mean, I know that if I'm sitting down where my iPad and Android pad are, I mean, I have um, Bluetooth sensor, I have infrared sensors, I have wireless sensors, and I have near-field communication sensors. Mm -hmm. So four, four of those equivalents of, you know, wavelengths or whatever they are, <laughs> are, 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 are pouring around me all the while. So, um, you know, it... Any one of them could be harmful, but if all four are harmful, then what's the effect of all four together? You know, it's radiation does thing. have its effects on uh, on human tissue, and that's been well proven and established. Um, you know, the mm. long term uses, like like you all have just said, ha we haven't had time to see what the uh, as they say sequelae will be from all the exposure, but we know that there are definitely some uh, negative effects as well already. So. Yeah, it's something to be aware of. Of course, we used to think microwaves would make us sterile too, didn't we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Remember that? I, I still got pregnant. <laughs> See, <I know>. so <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but didn't but but, but the, 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 that er, those early findings resulted in changes in how microwave ovens were built too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I'm wasn't that more for reassurance than the fact that they actually could affect your gonads or whatever? You know. Yeah. Well, also, also with a microwave, it's um, I, I I think they are actually harmful if you stand by them, but you tend to put things in them, get put them on, and then walk away. So it's not like your body is up front um, for the, well, to the microwave leakage. But I think you're right. You know, cell phones, Oculus Rift, 
a lot of things are a lot closer to us than they were for the last 50 years or whatever, right? I mean, they found that people living under high tension wires had definite um, repercussions from the, you know, from the radiated electricity. So we That's know good. it's probably doing something. Uh, hopefully, maybe we're evolving along with it. Those of us who <laughs> immerse ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that is or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because those yeah. of us who go sterile don't reproduce. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can or have twin you babies. Know, you know, we can go a marketplace. <laughs> Sorry, Mal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 something that I'm finding a bit disconcerting at the moment is the notion of uh, transhumanism and um, you know the singularity, and um, it seems to be promoted, being promoted uh, rather lots in the blogs and things at the moment. It's a kind of new religion, and um, I'm very opposed to such religions and things. But the um, you know where you're looking at all this, and you know I do I do always often think about evolution because human beings do adapt to their environment, and you know it there speeds might be up. something that might there might be something that my generation is being adversely affected by that will the next generation will be immune to so you know the, y y y it's not wholly pessimistic that's but I true think on these, mm -hmm. I think in these matters we do need to exercise a bit of caution maybe more so than we are at the moment um, I've certainly been thinking about it you know in terms of <laughs> how near should that iPad be you know well and, and, you, and the other and question the is you know, some of these effects may be things that are cumulative over, say, 40 years. Yeah, we yeah. don't so have time. What if, so what yeah. if we make that discovery, and then we can say, okay, well, you can't, you know, we have to restrict usage of these by people under a certain age to mm -hmm. avoid I impacting on reproduction if that turns out to be right. a significant Which may or may not issue. work. Which may or, you know, <laughs> which may or, you know, of course, it's like, you know, saying kid, teenagers can't, aren't, aren't supposed to drink. Well, yeah, we know how good <laughs> yeah, that <right>. works. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, the moment, at the moment you may outlaw it, um, there'll be yeah, a, a, yeah. a flux, yeah. an but, influx of use, you know. But we but, you uh, also know that what actually will happen is going to be totally different from what we expect. Oh, so yes. we, we thought that the big risk was nuclear war, and it turned out the big risk was corn syrup. <laughs> Saccharin. As far as killing off Americans. So and I'm, it's, anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to be here in 40 years, so what the hell? <laughs> well, you don't I, know that. I am going to be uploaded into a virtual world, as I've mentioned before yeah. numerous times. Yeah. So I will be here to tell people I told you so. Yeah, well, I'll be there to join you. Remember Woody <laughs> Allen in Sleeper? He was one of the first. <laughs> media all right okay, so back, what back, else back to, back perhaps to, now i'm noticing the time perhaps we should wrap so that uh um yeah we'll go on for a little bit let me re uh, i know marie's got a few other things there so let's go back uh, to uh, i mean i've got some marketing advice stuff um bunch of stuff happening oh the i like the walk mouse the new omnidirectional treadmill oh yes uh, road yeah. to vr was <laughs> talking about so it's a new take on treadmills normally uh -oh, the, the two the two again. popular ones there were two Exomni and a Cyberinth, basically little like, like plates, like Frisbees, and they're slippery, and you walk along the inside of them and you slide down the side, basically. These have little rollers in them that are motorized, uh, and it's a flat plate. It's not, it's not curved, it's flat, and it's expensive. It costs between $1,000 and $2,000, and they're mostly s selling it to like police departments right now for training. Um, but it is a, a, a different approach on the treadmill. It also doesn't have any guardrails. Um, they, and they say because it isn't, doesn't need it. You, 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 you're not falling over. Even though you have an Oculus Rift headset on, uh, you still don't need it. So, so we can translate that into cost effectiveness. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how very, it works. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they, they say these things aren't dangerous. There was um, a, one of the Oculus Rift uh, videos, I actually put it online, but I think I'll take it down now, was um, somebody played a prank with somebody wearing an Oculus Rift and tripped them over. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, and and you know the um, you know it, it it was you know it's a cheat trick thing you know um, but um, the, the guy the, the reaction was bad very bad yeah, it was in know, a Russian because, shopping mall yes yeah you know the the guy was fully immersed and then somebody pushed him over and you know the the effects were far worse than if he just fallen over you know, although yeah. you know if you're walking down the street reading something on your cell phone or talking to a friend somebody trips you over you, you you're still gonna be mad. Oh yeah, yeah. you'd be mad. But, uh, <laughs> now I, he knows what it's like to have a stroke. 
your body, your, the problem here, I think, was your mind and your body are in a state of slight disconnect. So, right, the, right. The, you know, you're, you're, you're focused on the immersion, which is in your mind mm -hmm. and in your vision. And the, the sudden shock of being tripped over forcibly was, right. um, you know, that, that was a reaction for the body, which at that moment was in sort of uh, standby mode, should we say. Okay. Anyway, anyway. And the final, <laughs> the final bit is NVR finished its Kickstarter and was successful. They're Beijing-based uh, uh, alternative to the Oculus Rift. So it's a similar kind of headset. You plug it into a PC. Uh, it comes with a little peripheral. Um, there's, there's a little bit of controversy over whether they're overselling it or not um, because their price is lower than Oculus Rift and they're promising you know, all these high specs. And they're also promising September delivery, which is insanely fast. Um, mm. But, uh, um, you know, the more competition, the better. I'd love to see if they're able to meet their goals and, and get the headsets delivered. And, and hopefully um, they'll be available in, in my new VR cafe in Boston so I can go try them on. Great. Yep. Okay, I've got one more link here that I'm just um, putting through to the chat in the hope that it gets to the channel chat room. Um, this was actually um, a link to massively.com during the week. Um, and um, it, it's a video interview that I'll be putting on Metaverse News, uh, Metaverse 3, um, uh, in a couple of days. Um, but um, it's uh, the CEO, um, Hilmar Peterson, I believe his name is, of um, at a, a conference called Game Horizon, and it's a thirty-minute talk um, which was actually about Eve Online's history and its future. But the headline of the article, which I think is um, quite interesting, is uh, CCP, the name of the company, mm -hmm. aiming aiming to create virtual worlds more meaningful than real life. <laughs> well, how, how's that for ambition? <laughs> Sounds like they're already immersed. <laughs> yeah, indeed it does. Okay, well, um, let me just go around all of you for any other things before we sort of call it a wrap, I think. Um, uh, pet love, pet love. Um, uh, any, um, I, we, uh, sadly, we haven't got into a long talk about the delights of SL11B, but um, you and I, of course, have been stuck in what? <laughs> well, you we, and I we've, have been, we've been in, in the auditorium, place. but you'll, have, you'll notice that I have, like, occasionally cammed up to the skyline. I think this looks like yeah. a really pretty um, birthday celebration, and, and I'm glad it's open next week, even though there won't be more yeah. presentations. Will, the, will there still be live shows next week? I, that well, I don't not, know. No, no, no live shows in today. Do they? Okay. But yeah. They won't. But if you were actually, if any of you out there are watching this live and uh, were watching the channel just the moment, you know, for a few minutes before this show started, uh, there is actually a clip. Uh, I guess it's from Safia, um, one of the um, SLB bulletins, uh, number sixteen, I think, which is interesting because um, it's promoting the uh, the hunt. Um, oh which yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> the, the SLB oh, yeah. hunt, and that that. That will be continuing throughout next week. So, and you're going to um, need it because there are like 90 spots where you can get free gifts and they're all yeah. going to be cool. When, they're all going to be cool. Yeah. When, when I was exploring, I, every time I came across one of those, I grabbed, I grabbed a hunt gift if it was available. What's the best one so, you pulled out so far? I haven't had time to run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep up with these matter. things. <laughs> Yeah, but I did grab a few of them where they were available beforehand. And um, but you know, but if um, you know, it's, it's a wonderful set of bills. So yeah, I think it's go, worth a look see go, still. You yeah. know, and it probably will be quieter. So you know, you, it may be a more comfortable sort of thing to just wander around in the um, starting on Monday through to I guess it's um, next Sunday it will close. Um, but the fact this hunt is still going at the same time, well, yeah, you know, it's an added bonus, um, another reason <laughs> to go. I think. You know, our so, intrepid hunt reporter was in charge of that um, whole hunt, Rosamu Mendelssohn, who does the hunt oh, buzz right. on Happy Hunting. She yeah. she was the organizer for this hunt, and uh, she's done an incredible job, and she's already gone on to um, say that she really respects hunt organizers now, even more than she did before, which was quite a lot. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> big job, it, really big job. You know, yeah, great. Right. You know, it actually goes to me. This would be a good way, a good way of getting people on to um, to explore the hypergrid, have a hypergrid-wide mm. hunt. We need a hypergrid <laughs> you know, birthday. 
Yeah, we, we just, you know, the idea of jumping grids. You can make it on only, August 22nd be, uh, next year. You know, Excuse there'll be a prize, on every, a prize on every grid you visit kind of thing. They, well, uh, we do have anniversary of the hypergrid coming up in October. Yeah. Uh, so maybe uh, in conjunction, uh, or, you know, sometime near there, I can get some grids to organize a, a hunt to celebrate. I'll make a film. It, 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 to be honest, <laughs> it, to be honest, actually, it occurs to me, just as you said that, that that would be a great way to lead up to the Open Sim Community Conference. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, will, I will get fleet. bring it up. <laughs> I'll bring it up at our meeting. Um, I, I, I won't bring it up to me. I'll just email her. There yeah. you go. <laughs> well, get me, get, get me along to one of these meetings if I'm free. I'm curious. I'm, al I'm always coming up with bright ideas that I'll never do myself. <laughs> Just make sure you're six to 18 inches away from the source of the radiation, Maria, when you do that. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, that, uh, I, I wonder. I wonder if hypergridding adversely affects our avatars. I think our avatars <laughs> probably <laughs> like it. <laughs> yes, okay. it, it mutates them. You occasionally you'll show up on the other end, like with weird as a zebra. <laughs> with, 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 with every hyper, with every hypergrid, your avatar evolves into a morphic. Your mesh skin will get meshier and <laughs> meshier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you know, you, you adapt to the hypergridding. And, and there's no telling where your hair will be attached. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're right. You they they should hair, return. Yeah. They should bring that back just for like that, a week. <laughs> that, that still happens in Second Life, you know. Nuh -uh. Hair, no. Hair no, no, no. We're no, talking no, about where like it, it ends like up it did a, at the back of your rear okay. end. Your shoes and your hair would wind up stuck on your butt. Yeah, stuck no, to your butt. Yep. <laughs> Had to relog. <laughs> yes, but it was I have a picture somewhere on a hard drive of the first time that happened to me and I was flying. And I my I I realized what had happened. I started to laugh. I had to take my my hands off the keyboard, and I, I swear I must have laughed for fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we love Second Life, I, I, and not why I, they I think we do. Yeah. I still can't, I still tend to lose my hair, but it doesn't get at least it doesn't get attached to the wrong places. You just sort of walk somewhere for a while. <laughs> okay, uh, Maria, anything else from you um, uh, coming up or um, past week or I I incidentals to the news we've all been through? I, I think I, I got everything. I think I got hmm. everything. So uh, if you have announcements, news, email me. Um, I'll do a story. Um, Maria at hypergoodbusiness.com. Indeed. And for the news every day, Maria at hypergoodbusiness.com. <laughs> After you've after you've looked at Malbones at Twitter.com, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, you probably end up getting the same thing half the time anyway. Right, um, uh, Tara, Tara, my fab. Um, <laughs> there must be something, but I don't know what. <laughs> oh, we didn't look at your uh, we didn't look at your kitties. I mean, your bears, Tara. Oh, we, well, we looked at the bears last week. The same bears? Those same bears. I just I just cleared out the stuff that wasn't SN eleven B. Oh, okay. They just look so different over there. And of course, the one with Hieronymus oh. we did see. Yes, yes. Right. No, the, the, but, the bears but. just the bears are just a little lonesome because they're, they're buddies <laughs> from from prior years, and the cake slices have all <clears throat> gone back to uh, in inventory. They ate them. <laughs> they ate them. Yes, yes. We know what we know about teddy bear picnics. So. <laughs> Well, yes. I, 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 to end with, I think, Katara hasn't actually mentioned it, but I think we have an exclusive here, because I gather that if you join us at the same time next week, you will see us in not only different chairs, but an assortment of different true. chairs this is with true. some very strange poses in them. Or maybe I should just say more suitable Yay. poses. Yay. Well, and, and some suitably un unsuitable ones, too. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, okay, but, yeah. but it was uh, that each chair that I that I acquired had to have at least a couple of reasonable poses that reasonable <laughs> humanoid avatars would choose, might choose, to look reasonably decent on camera. That's awesome. Very, so. very good. That's, and and I guess good. since they're all new next week, we can use that as an excuse to be in the wackiest poses possible. True. And flip I'll through them. Pants. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody, I, I, everybody I, I, wear pants. I'm hopeful. I'm actually hopeful that amongst the various options, that there are some poses that actually work in skirts. 
for Whoa. those who choose to wear skirts. <laughs> Whoa. But, yeah, you're no guarantees. I can't wait you're to see these. On, you're always on me to change my costume, and I've sort of changed to my secondary costume today. Which That's is right. Very good. But, um, uh, you know, one of my other ready-made, co um, <laughs> other ready-made costumes is, of course, my Scotsman look. And um, I don't think I'll wear him next week. Just you should be. You case. should be the kitty next week. Well, it's uh, it's the kilt I was worried about. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I should probably we'll, at some we'll point do some shopping for tinies, tinies chairs. Yeah. I doubt. I doubt if I'll fit. I do have I a have pussycat chair somewhere, but um, but unfortunately, my pussycat's lips don't move when I'm speaking. Well, um, neither do well they, they don't hear half gets... the time either. <laughs> He, he, he doesn't even meow properly. He makes the right noise, but the lip, you know, the mouth doesn't move. Shame, shame, shame on kids' gat. Aw, we'll have to get Lauren to fix him up. We'll get yeah. Dr. Lauren Tone on the sound case there. Okay. Indeed. Now, um, finally, and um, I only remembered this a while ago um, after Caledonia had left. Um, um, she is in the kind of uh, Seattle area. She was actually mentioning in Batchat when Tara said the Pacific Northwest. Um, they're, they're not, well, they're, by my standards, they're the other end of the country, but they're not too far away by American standards. But um, she forgot to mention, and I really haven't got the details handy, but you may want to look it up. Um, she is actually doing something in real life Seattle very shortly as well, which you mentioned yesterday, but um, not today. Um, anyway, it's great to uh, it was um, it was great to have had her on. So um, if you're still watching or watching a replay, uh, thanks for joining us, Caledonia, and hope we see you soon. Uh, meanwhile, of course, it's um, thanks to Pet Love. Thank you. You are ever so welcome. And thanks to Maria. Thank you, Maria. Always a pleasure to be here, Mel. <laughs> meta, meta, Maria. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, thanks always, as always, to Tara. Thank you, Tara. You're most welcome. And the kitties. Thank and we thank you well. too, Mel. Because without you, oh. it wouldn't be the same. Right. <laughs> and I do, I do apologize for our late start this week, technical considerations. And I also need to apologize to, um, um, I think we had a little bit of an interference on our Skype channel with voice dropping on a couple of occasions. Uh, nothing we can do about it, I'm afraid, but I um, hope it didn't disturb your viewing um, uh, too much. We will be back Sunday at noon, this time next week, where we are, um, I forgot to do this at the beginning, where we are broadcasting live from Chilbo. In association, in association, sorry, with AVU TV, and uh, on a similar matter, if you want to watch this show in replay, video on demand, high resolution, available on your iPad, Android, and everything else, do check out slartist.com, S-L-A-R-T-I-S-T, -S for all your video on demand needs, at least as far as the metaverse is concerned. So, with that, um, it's goodbye for now, and we'll see you next week.